So let's have a look on SPS sessions and how to record and monitor them. So SPS stands for Safeguard for Privileged Sessions. So this is the proxy solution. And if you have a connection through that proxy, you can monitor it. And of course, you can record it and do other nice things we're going to cover later. So the first thing is to have a session. And I'm going to use my demo environment to create a session. So the first thing I'm going to run is about the Microsoft Terminal Services client. And I will use my session proxy as a remote desktop services gateway. So I just click connect it here. I have to authenticate myself to the proxy and I have appropriate characters here. So it is my name coming from the directory and the password. There we go. And now I have to you specify the account. In this case, it is test one and I have the certificates coming from the system. I just go click on OK and I will get a connection to the appropriate Windows based server and I will be logged in as the privileged account without knowing the password. OK, so far so good. And of course, now I can go to the appropriate stuff over there, execute a couple of stuff here, whatever, PowerShell, control panel, or whatever I, I want. And of course, I now want to see what's going on here. So I have my session here. And I'm going to go back to my administrative page here on my safeguard for privileged sessions. And if I go to the search page, it will show me that I have currently an active session. This is the RDP session via my remote desktop server gateway functionality in that proxy. And if I want to see what's going on there, I can click on the details over here. And I can just click on the follow session here. And I have downloaded a little bit of data, but this data, if I try to open it here, it does not have a proper application to use this. This is because the browser cannot handle that data and you don't have the appropriate in, uh, application installed. The player that was is used to replay that data or this recording is no longer bundled with the uh, installation image. You ha it has to be downloaded manually or separately. So if you don't have that browser installed and it is not playing, you can then go to the support portal and download this, the player, in this case for Windows, and install it manually. I have already downloaded it and hopefully I'm going to find this here. Here's the desktop player installer and I'm just going to install this very quickly. That only takes a second. And now it installs the player. It automatically did does the file association it's pretty important and when you just double click on it it will launch the player that's what we want so simply click on next <clears throat> click on next accept the license agreement and click on next and let it install so now it's done just click on finish and that was the installation of the player if we now click on follow session it will download data again here it is if we double click on that admin password and now it loads the data into that player and you can just click on the start button takes a little time and now you should should see your live session over here let's make it a little bit smaller here so we can see something you're going to see now that we have something here and if i move the window the other one moves as well so this is just monitoring the session live in real time pretty easy more or less straightforward Let's talk about command restriction. There may be a case that you do not want to run special commands by your users or with your privileged users, at least with your privileged users. And Safeguard offers a nice feature to restrict commands uh, to reach the target to be executed. So even if you're maybe using a very highly high privileged account and you're already logged into some kind of asset and you want to execute something that may be whatever, very critical, uh, safeguard can handle this and can we maybe prevent execution of these commands. So there's a nice feature in safeguard and this is buried under the policies tab in the safeguard for privileged session. So this is a session feature. It is not from the safeguard for privileged passwords. It's a session feature. So you have to look for the policies and you have something that is called a content policy. And the content policy you can define is whatever up to you. But if you open something that comes with the product or if you have your own uh, policy to be defined, you maybe 
open this one here, this is an example of for SSH. And there's something like commands in SSH Telnet or MSSQL. This is all about the command channel in the underlying protocol where Safeguard can look into. And if you have a certain match for the things you, you define here in the upper boxes, this may lead to the fact that these commands will suppress and never reach the target. So in this case, you have SCP asterisk. That means uh, you cannot execute a, an, an, a copy command via the SCP command in the uh, in the session, or maybe you have something like RM remove something. So if you want to mangle your server like RM dash whatever RF with the slash to to delete each and everything on your Unix system, uh, this will not work even if you try to run this as root. So because the command will be stopped at the proxy and will never reach the end system. And following this approach, you can have lots of things. You can have a very long list of commands. You can have um, regular expression to be used uh, to whatever make the syntax a little bit more complex but more powerful. Uh, but in the end, you're going to end up with a long list. And this may be not the best case to manage this, but this may be the way to prevent uh, critical tasks very directly in your policy definition. And maybe for a more fine granular control of all these things, you may need to use other products like the Privilege Access Suite for Unix or similar products. Let's talk about the command detection feature of Safeguard or maybe in a more precise command detection feature and Windows title dis detection feature. There are two things that uh, usually come in common with the session proxy. And as usual, you have to find that in a policy, what, uh, what to detect, or more precise in this case, this is something that is called indexing. And indexing is a feature you enable or disable in your proxy rule for a specific con connection. And uh, once this is running, it will try to look into the protocol to find out what strings are exchanged via the wire with the uh, client and the server. And this is a very nice thing because if you are maybe, for instance, looking for something that we are supporting our latest release, this is Microsoft SQL traffic, we now can proxy and uh, whatever inspect, you may have some kind of recording of a session. And if you click to that session, get to the information, you're going to see all these commands that are exchanged. So you, in fact, you're going to see all the SQL statements that are executed from via the client on the server. And you see all the responses and the data that's coming back and forth. So in this case, this is something that works for SQL. Of course, it will work for other protocols as well. I have a couple of things here like the uh, RDP. So RDP works in the same, pretty much in the same way. But as you know, RDP is a graphical protocol and uh, you don't have any strings directly on the wire. So you have to have something like optical character recognition to look into that protocol or on the graphical representation to see which strings are on the screen and one of the things you can detect is something like the windows title of applications that are opened and if you see here i have now the powershell opened and I have some kind of file explorer open so from this alone i can tell what kinds of application the user has executed later in my audit and of course, not very surprising, the most common thing that works very nicely is on SSH, because SSH in this case is just text that is exchanged, so there's no encryption, no graphical stuff or whatever, so you can see it all. 